today it's the uh, the Board of Health meeting, May 18th, remote participation. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, we are uh, conducting our Board of Health meeting via remote participation. Uh, there will be no in-person attendance, but the it was posted and um, the public was made aware of how to attend this Zoom meeting, both via computer or call-in. So we will open the meeting at 6.06. .06 and present in the meeting is uh, Christy Pachurik, Ken Cushay, Cushay, Caitlin Rock, <clears throat> Cynthia Bennett, and Gina McNeely. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. So we have no appointments. Um, the minutes from April 27th. Um, They were um, updated to uh, anyone who doesn't have the updated minutes. Um, if you have minutes that say 523 Hadley Road, they have been changed. Uh, I'm sorry, to read what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think the it, first, the minutes I sent last week were um, said 325. Oh, I'm sorry. So I do have the new ones, 523. Yes. Right, Terrific. that's why I emailed to you because Gina pointed that out. So I did correct it and re email it. That's why Ken doesn't have that one. Oh, okay, so then I do have the updated. Okay, so it is 523 yeah, Hadley Road property has been sold. Um, the, the ones I have uh, look good. Um, does someone want to make a motion? Um, so moved. Thank you. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's three nothing. Aye, three nothing. The minutes of April twenty seventh, twenty twenty, are approved. Um. Now uh, I do have a quick question. Since um, Cindy, you are here. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have the minutes from the emergency meeting. Yes. Does Ken, Ken, do you have the minutes from the emergency meeting? He does. Yes, I do, but I don't have them right in front of me. Okay. I brought them to them to him yesterday. Christy doesn't have them because she wasn't at the meeting. Right. And I just figured it was most important that Ken have them since you do two were at it. And Thank you. Wrote. You're so nice to me. Yes, I do have them in front of me right now. Okay, if you could look at them real quick. I already read them, and I am at a motion to um, accept. Okay, I will second that motion, and uh, we'll take a vote to accept the meeting minutes of May 6th. It's the emergency meeting. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Two, okay, 2-0. Two Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, so old business, online permitting, there's no update at this time. So we're gonna table that for next meeting. <clears throat> New business, um, the housing health agent update. Uh, hi, Gina. Hello. Um, I don't have a lot to report as my, my report reflected. It's been um, rather slow, but um, I did hear from Jeff today regarding the Pond Ridge condominiums matter. Um, and we're going to have a telephone call with the housing court tomorrow okay. regarding our application for an administrative search warrant. Okay. Um. Uh, 
Okay, so they might, the neighbors might have to testify. Yes. Okay, are they doing that Zoom or just on phone? I think just on the phone. Yeah, not every department is doing Zoom yet. Okay. Okay, and that's just a warrant to get in, correct? Yes. Okay. And really, you know, just to see if they have a functioning toilet. That's really right. Right. a matter okay. of hand. All right. And then I also see um, that you went through to 523 Hadley Road. Yep. Steve was there for uh, witnessing a Title V. So I asked him if I could join on a couple of Title V inspections. Great. You know, just to take along. Um, but I did get a walk through with the buyer of what the house, uh, the plans for that house. I think it's going to be really nice. Is it going to be another rooming house or is it going to be a single? Uh, it'll be a big two family. Nice. Yep. Great. Well, thank you very much, Gina. Does anyone have any questions for Gina? No, but uh, that was a nice report. Thank you, Gina. You're welcome. Thanks, Ken. So we had an emergency with our health agent. Um, he is ill, so we will table the health agent update and the 2020 pool protocol for the private, semi-private locations. Um, and I think that that's safe to do because I'm pretty sure they're not gonna be opening their pool Memorial Day weekend this year because of the 10 or more <coughs> not having groups of 10 or more people. Caitlin, um, I'm 99% I'm sure I read something from the governor saying no public pools will be open this year. This huh. year? Yeah. I did not read that. Uh, Cindy, you have your hand raised. Yes, I just wanted to offer that um, I know both of the, the pools in town, the semi-private have requested inspections. They were both, one's paid so far, one hasn't. Um, they were both told that they may not be allowed, let me just move, may not be allowed to open and that that was still pending. And they both still want the inspections done before Memorial Day. <laughs> like just in case they can open? Basically that they're not the ones not allowing the opening. So, and, and again, in case they can open, which we told them. Um, well, we'll have so, to I'm just saying. <laughs> we'll have to discuss that um, yeah. at another meeting because mm -hmm. with, with the inspector here, because I'm not sure if the governor's not allowing right. public pools to open that we should inspect. Right, I agree. They shouldn't be inspected I, I, for the potential to open. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to let you all know that they both have reached out to us. Okay. I know Steve has talking, talked to both of them about it, and they both were still asking for an inspection before Memorial Day. I think we're going to have to check into the legality of yep. that, because yep. sometimes uh, it's not our job <laughs> yeah. to get into the law uh, you right. know what I mean we our yeah. job is to inspect yeah and their job is to follow the law right so um I think that we might need to make an inquiry um into what it is our uh mandate is mm -hmm. so uh before we say yes or no mm -hmm. Um, we, because we may be mandated to inspect because that is what our, that's right. our job. Yep. Um, and then their job is to follow the law. Correct. So, uh, we'll have to, I'm going to have to do an inquiry, um, and you can, uh, refer them to, uh, our next board of health meeting. Okay. Uh, to discuss whether they'll be having inspections or not. Okay, that's fine. Thank you so much, Cindy. Is that you, uh, Gina, uh, Christy, Ken, do you guys think that that's acceptable? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. And I'm, I'm actually asking Gina because you actually hold a similar position in another town. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. 
Okay. I'll look into what I, you know, we're all reading so many things right now. I will confirm after this meeting what I saw about swimming pools. Coming right. Up. But yeah. even if I'm still not sure about the legality, even if it is outlawed necessarily, um, is that our mandate okay. as a board of health right. to not inspect? You know, like I still need to look at that yep. part of the law. Um, but thank you guys. Uh, the public health nurse update. Um, so um, our public health nurse, Cheryl Volpe, uh, prepared an update on the 17th. That's yesterday. <laughs> and um, she's updated the symptoms. So it would be a fever of 100. Point four, cough, sore throat, body aches, loss of taste or smell, headaches, difficulty in breathing, fatigue, and or gastrointestinal distress, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Um, there's an update regarding uh, treatments. So they do individualized case care plans with uh, healthcare providers ordering COVID-19 uh, testing, public health monitoring. They monitor the cases, the contacts, um, self-isolation. They've actually gone to, self-isolation is 10 day minimum and a 14 day self-quarantine. Then it also goes up to hospitalization and or rehabilitation centers. So that was the update for the treatment. Um, there's a new definition, case definition in MAVEN, and it's for probable, a probable case. That's a positive blood test confirming the pres presence of antibodies in the blood, indicating a possible current infection, a past infection, or someone who got an immunization. <laughs> Serology is a tool for COVID-19, but a better diagnostic tool is a PCR test that came from DPH. A probable is a positive as far as the Department of Public Health is concerned and will be investigated. That kind of gets into a, a sticky area when people start getting immunized. <laughs> I have a feeling they're gonna, they're gonna go back on that. Um, when, uh, uh, when immunizations come in because nobody's getting immunized now, obviously, but when they do, they're not going to start investigating <laughs> cases as a positive. Cindy, did you <laughs> raise your hand again? No. Oh, okay. I just, <laughs> I didn't clear it. I have no, a thing that, saying, oh, yeah, no, that was from before. <laughs> I have a thing saying Cynthia Bennett's iPhone has a raised hand. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so the case investigations in MAVEN, there's three phases. Index case assessment is where they monitor and the clinical objective, subjective interpretations of the illness. Basically, you look at the illness. Um, they manage the well-being of the case, practice cultural diversity, maintain HIPAA and document activities of the case. And then there's contact tracing is finding and contacting any individual who has had exposure to a confirmed, means tested, index case, perform a risk assessment, and implement appropriate treatment, case closure, final outcome, recovered or deceased. Trainings or meetings that she has done. Uh, on Tuesday, May 12th, she had the weekly MAVEN webinar and there's new guidance for testing close, close contacts. All people identified as close contacts should be tested by PCR, that's the nasal swab, as soon as possible after notification. COVID-19 testing will require an order from a healthcare provider. So um, I will say that um, Cheryl is a little concerned about that because that does not require any symptoms. So 
She's concerned about what goes in the letter from the Board of Health or the public health nurse to the physician to say that this person should, it, the, what, what happened was the new guidance says that it said that this person should be tested. And what she's saying is that's not best practices. So she's a nurse, she's supposed to do best practices. So what she and I discussed was that instead, our letter can say <laughs> that she, she, the, your patient has been identified as a close contact and new guidance <laughs> has suggested testing. This letter allows for testing. <laughs> So in other words, mm -hmm. here's the ticket. We're not saying should, but here's your ticket that allows you testing. Yep. You know, yep. I think that that's fair. It doesn't compromise her um, years of schooling, years of nursing. It doesn't compromise us as a board of health wasting tests because the doctor can really make that decision. Mm -hmm. He gave the ticket, <laughs> the golden ticket, <laughs> that allows the doctor to give the test if the doctor so chooses, but they don't have to. But we're just saying the state is saying close contacts can be, you know, it is the new guidance that close contacts get tested. Yep. This person was identified by Sunderland Board of Health as a close contact. Mm -hmm. Here you go. And we tell the person. We can tell the person that they you you know the the state says you should get tested. Here's your letter to get tested. Take it to your doctor. Mhm. Mm that's that's how we kind of left it. Um, just because she didn't feel that she should tell somebody you should be tested. So we're going to tell them the state says you, you should be tested. This letter will allow you to get tested. Bring it to your doctor to get tested. It, it kind of does the same thing. It just doesn't have her saying you should be tested when someone right. has no symptoms. Um, I think... I, I think it's gonna, all of this is gonna be moved with mass testing. <laughs> We're gonna be doing, hopefully, uh, soon enough, we'll be doing the EDS drive-through testing in Deerfield. Hopefully we'll do 10,000 tests a day, whatever. And this will be moved. But I'm not gonna have somebody compromise their ethics. And if she doesn't feel that it's appropriate, I, I can't, you know, and, and it, it is borderline. It's borderline appropriate. Right. So I think that we accomplished the same thing. Does anybody have any comments? No, I think you uh, did a great job, both of you. Yeah. A fantastic Gina? job of the wording and stuff. Thanks. Gina, Thank I know she works for you also in another town. Right. Um, I'm no longer. Um, the, the director came back to Montgomery. Oh, good. Yep. So, oh, good for you. Okay. Yeah. Yep. But I, well, I agree. I mean, yeah, sometimes the state leaves us holding the bag, probably unintentionally, but they, they don't think of the nuances. Right. So I, I, I lawyered up. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, she also did a conference call with local boards of health Maven webinar on May 12th. Uh, it was about the Commonwealth transitioning to reopen the state by implementing a four phase approach. Testing and the key components are testing, treatment, contact tracing, and guidance for reopening non-essential businesses. 
And the ability to move to the next phase is dependent upon the prior phase's data. It would need to reflect the reduction in the spread of COVID-19 infection. Moreover, the state could move in and out of different phases for a period before finally defining a new normal. So that is her report. And I know new guidance came out today. I was working and I didn't see it yet. So <laughs> I haven't read it yet. Um, uh, restaurant and grocery sales. Um, without um, the health agent here, I can't say too much. Uh, on Monday, the Blue Heron was at the um, Board of Selectmen meeting. I was also present. They are looking to sell groceries out of their restaurant. Um, what, as a revenue stream, uh, using their suppliers. Um, they're, you know, gonna do things like uh, vacuum seal meats, you know, they're really good steaks <laughs> and they're really good, uh, <laughs> you know, they're high end foods. But I think they're, she's even talking about, um, you know, fruits, vegetables, um, I even think flowers. I think that she's looking at all of her distributors um, to really get a revenue stream going. And they're very, um, she seems to be trying real hard. <laughs> Um, and, uh, so what I did was I said, well, you know, I, I said, it cannot be discussed at a board of selectmen meeting. Um, I said, it's a board of health issue, except maybe zoning or their license. And that isn't the board of health issue. <laughs> we can only <laughs> maintain the, uh, health part of it. Um, whether they're uh, meeting the standards and, um, you know, if, if, if they're meeting the legality of whatever their license is, that's, that's not our, that's, that's not in our purview. So, um, Steve was putting together the uh, retail uh, checklist for her that yep. she's going to need to drop a plan and submit it to us as to how she's going to, you know, keep the cold, <laughs> the cold foods cold at what temperature, the, you know, if she's going to do take and bake or she's going to do hot foods, um, you know, like um, uh, the millstone or, you know, the dating of things or how she's going to keep them hot at temperature. Uh, basically, uh, he's going to, he was drawing that up. So, We'll have to table that until next meeting for a full discussion because uh, Steve was working on that and he is out sick. Uh, and just the next Board of Health meeting. Does anybody have anything they want to bring up that's not, um, that's new business? Well, um, oh, never mind. Uh, this might fall under old business. Um, remember that when you and I discussed uh, about the uh, um, FRICOG uh, PPE distribution to different towns? Yes. Well, I found out that actually it only involved first responders type stuff and the fire department and went up and got the stuff for the town. Okay. Because in the newspaper it said local boards of health came and picked up PPE at the FERCOG, but we were never contacted. Yes, Cindy. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, I do know well, that so they did provide PPE to the town clerk for the town election and town meeting. Excellent. So they provided masks and gloves um, 
And so she picked those up the week before. So, and we had not been in, uh, informed that any of this was available either on okay. our side. So, um, but that was picked up. It was up just that confusion that. in the paper. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah. We knew nothing about it. Nope. So. But I'm glad we got it. And that's great. That's, that's what it's there for. And that's terrific. Exactly. Yeah. Cause we definitely need it for those events coming up. Yep. Yep. Good. Okay. Thank you. I was also concerned. We also heard that um, Sunderland was not providing food for the elderly. <laughs> and that concerned me very much. Yeah. So I, because I know we are. <laughs> so, um, Cindy, I think we took care of that, right? Yes. Um, the uh, Council of Aging Chair weighed in, and she explained to all of us everything that they were involved in and what they were doing. I knew we were providing meals to our seniors already, um, and we had even started calling some of them who we thought might benefit from it, who weren't mm -hmm. participating. And they've been getting meals. Uh, Life Path has been providing it and doing it in conjunction with the senior center, along with what they're doing for the students. So, um, yeah, I think we're set there. I just don't know why it's not being reported. <laughs> kind of. Hmm. I'll tell you, we're getting the short end of the stick every day. And I know, I know that it's coming or coordinated through the senior center, but other towns that are involved in the senior center are being counted as providing meals. So I just don't know why Sunderland wasn't. And that was just a concern for me as well. Absolutely. If we could <laughs> um, ask the emergency manager to please make sure she reports each service we are providing. Sure. Because I think that the, I don't know if she doesn't know which, that we're providing all these services. I don't know. But it's not getting reported. And it really should be because we have a lot of hard work going on. And also, the senior might not look for it if they see, oh, okay, our town doesn't do it. And we did put an all call out to all of our seniors. Um, okay. And we sent it via email. A lot of them have family members on those calls, you know, as part of their call list. And um, there were some that we know maybe benefit from it and we reached out to them as well okay. um so none of them took us up on it but there's been a two at least consistent and a couple have popped in and out but not consistently i think just two okay. which so all right so whoever's responsible we'll have we'll track down whoever's responsible for reporting that and we'll just make sure that they just know how important it is okay thank sure. you so much Cindy. you're welcome yes please Okay, so next date. Um, uh, okay. Uh, June. Well, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Neither are we. Today? Today's the 18th. Uh, 18th. Uh, June 22nd. Is everyone here? Yes. I'm here. Okay. Board of Health, June twenty second. So, does anybody have a motion to make? Yes, I made a motion to close the meeting. Oh, good! I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Oh, Thank before you all. everybody, before you Bye, hang Christy. up. Before you, everybody hangs up, um, uh, take a ride up by my house and look at the sign that I put out in my front lawn. Okay. Will do. Thank you. All right. Have a and great evening, guys. And everybody stay guys. healthy. Thank All you. Right, and everybody, everybody stay, stay healthy. healthy. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye Christy. Bye. Bye. Bye, Christy. Bye, Christy. Thank you, Christy. Bye-bye. Okay. Good to hear your voice again, Christy. <laughs> <laughs>